guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and subbing the man Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Nevin. So, yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's a go. All right. I give her one last wry smirk as she continues to glare at me. Well, I'm absolutely certain I've seen that exact expression now, but I don't see where I could have... Oh. Oh, no. Shit. Eloise, is everything all right? People seem to have liked that song. It's not the problem. The poodle. I feel like I knew her and it just came back to me. She's a former fiancé of the Count of Kelt. And why is that a problem? The last time we saw each other, she caught me in bed with someone. It's embarrassing, but I don't see... With the Count. Before they went their separate ways. Excuse me? I didn't know it was him. I've been drinking a lot, and I know it's no excuse, but I don't interfere with couples. That's a personal rule. I... Okay. I'll take your word for it. I guess that explains the look she gave you. I jumped down the stage, followed by a cat. As another band takes our place and the music starts up again, the party now truly underway. I never really talked to her, but that was the only time I saw her and the mood wasn't exactly there, as you can imagine. Maybe I should apologize for that. I don't think she wants an apology, especially now. I guess you're right. I let out a long sigh. I had planned to have fun, but I have to admit that this reunion is dampening my mood a bit. I'm going to refill my cup. Do you want... A cat then lowers his voice as if he were whispering a terrible secret to me. Some nadi? I give him an amused smile. Looks like he's found something he enjoys drinking. Uh, not now, maybe later, but don't hold back from me. Okay. He grins cheerfully before giving me a brief worried look. I realize then that his drink is just an excuse that this that his drink is just an excuse to give me some time alone and settle down. Bird brain, you can just tell me this stuff, no need to make up excuses. The problem is, as I watch him go, I realize that I don't want to be alone. I want to be distracted. I want company. I should join someone. Let's go with a cat. Seeing the bird walk away, I decide to join him. I wouldn't mind another cup of Nadi after all. Besides, this is our first public first public performance. We need to talk about it, while we still have this moment in mind. So I shake myself, just to regain my composure, before heading off in pursuit of a cat. I find him at the entrance to the baths, filling his cup with wine. Obviously, he has found the secret hiding place of Tanakh's barrel. I approach and wave at him while he gives me a, gives me a surprised look. Eloi, I thought you wanted to stay close to the scene. Eh, I changed my mind. After all, another round won't hurt me. Who knows when I'll get another chance to drink something this good. I guess that's one way of looking at it. Are you are you planning to meet up with Tenok or someone else next? I thought I'd stick around that corner. I thought I'd stick around that corner for a while. After everything that's happened, I need a break. Well, I can stay with you then. We could drink our wine quietly and talk about our performance. Unless you don't want me, of course. No, I, I mean, yes, I, I mean, you can stay if you want. I chuckle softly. There's one thing I won't get tired of, it's teasing a cat like this. After I've had my fill of Nidhi too, I come over and grab the falcon by the arm and start pulling him with me. Eloi, what are you doing? You want a little peace, right? Trust me, now that we've started this party, it's going to get real loud around here real quick. I know a much more quiet place. All right, but I can walk by myself, you know. You don't have to pull me like that. Maybe, but it's a lot more fun this way. <sighs> I burst out laughing. After a few seconds, I can hear a cat doing the same as he lets me pull him along. Looks like he's really starting to relax. And so we move on to King Lusk's Gardens, located on the east wing of the castle, of the side of the castle. During my visit on the first day, I had been am amazed at the simplicity of the place. There's nothing extravagant here, mostly fruit trees and a few flower beds, as well as a couple of benches for nobles and diplomats to sit on. But there's an atmosphere of tranquility that will definitely suit a cat. As if to confirm my thoughts, I hear the falcon whistle in appreciation. It's really simple. It's really pretty. Simple but pretty. You'll just have to tell that to Lord Lusk. He takes care of it personally from what I understand. Really? I didn't know kings could have hobbies like that. Take it now. Water time. Er, this is a, more of a shake, I think. Hmm. Milk and cookies flavored milkshake. Zero, su zero sugar, so I don't know what's in this. What is it in this? Stevia leaf extract, okay. All right, that's what's in that. Okay, cool. They're people like everyone else. I guess they have the right to relax a bit, in other ways than by going on vacation. 
I give him a playful look, and I'm surprised to see a cat laughing softly instead of averting his gaze in embarrassment. Paying more attention to his face, I see that his cheekbones are nicely are nicely rosy and his eyes slightly misty. Seriously? I know he said he can't really hold his alcohol, but still. How about we just chill for a bit? I nudge a cat towards one of the benches and we sit down. The bird continues to look around with a big smile, obviously enjoying the view the royal garden offers him. It's almost strange to see him like this. I've only seen him so close to, do, to this expression when he's playing, but even then he remains focused on his instrument. Here, for a brief moment, a cat seems totally relaxed. I slip my paw into my pocket and find the purse Vakad gave me yesterday. <sighs> hey, this seems like a good time to give this to him. Oh, by the way, I have something for you. You bought me a gift? I didn't know you needed presents for the for this kind of... Oh, no, I, it's just... I still feel bad about breaking your loot the other day, and I wanted to do something to make up for it. Oh, but I told you, it's no big deal. It's just a string, and I have several spares. Let's say it's so I can have... Let's say it's so I can have a good conscience. I went hunting yesterday with Vakad to find something to make you a new rope, and... There you go. I give him the leather pouch as he looks at me in surprise. He plays with the cord that keeps it closed for a moment before raising his beak and giving me a thankful smile. I appreciate it. I really do. It wasn't necessary, but it really makes me happy to see you doing this for me, but have you really been hunting? Yep, really. I'll tell you about it later. And about the string thing. It, well, it was necessary. I screwed up and needed to fix it. Great way to look at it, Eloise. How about you try to apply it to other aspects of your life as well? Nope, this is not the time for that kind of remark. Meanwhile, the cat comes and takes his loop between his talons, placing it on his lap and getting to manipulate the handle. What are you doing? I have a new string. I'm installing it. You don't have to do that right now. Your loot is still... Well, you didn't have to go hunting for me either. I do it because I want to, Eloi. What can I say to that? Absolutely nothing. So I just let the cat do what he wants. Even with alcohol in his blood, he gest his gestures are precise when it comes to his instrument. There's something almost hypnotizing about watching him move his fingers so quickly, each gesture fulfilling its purpose. After a little over a minute, he finally raises his head, flashing me a radiant smile as he presents his loot to me. Ta-da! Your string is now attached. He looks very proud of himself. I'm about to respond when, for a brief moment, I see him. The same look, the same smile. For a brief moment, the face of a fox appears over that of the falcon. Vigo. No. Not now. Not tonight. Let me enjoy this moment, please. Eloise? A cat's voice snaps me out of my haze. My guilt can wait. For now, I refocus on the bird in front of me. Sorry, the alcohol is going to my head, no doubt. Oh, Yes, the Nidhi can do that. It's stronger than it looks, and not everyone can hold it as well as I do. He finishes his sentence with a high-pitched laugh before taking another sip. Mm-hmm. You sure hold your alcohol perfectly, Aket. I did the same, but without the laughing part. I may have had a tad too much to drink, but it's going to take more than that to make this to make me this merry. Let's hope this string brings us good luck in two days. But from, his re from the reactions we got tonight, I don't think we'll need it. They loved us. Yeah, I really enjoyed being on stage. I've never been happier than when I was playing there in front of the crowd with you. It was the first time I, was, I really felt myself. The first time I could act like I really wanted to. Second, y'all. It is shit time. All right, y'all, and we are back. Let's jump right into it. He raised his beak to the sky, a pensive expression on his face while I gave him an intrigued glance. What do you mean? I thought you were a musician in Makad, too. This is different. At home, who we are doesn't really matter. The most important thing is our status. He lifts a talon, gently caressing the golden bar under one of his eyes with the tip of his claw. And musician, that's not exactly a good status. It's slave labor, not fit for a citizen. Between that and the lack of power in my brand, let's just say I was only playing for small private events, discreetly hidden away. He lets out a long sigh before turning his head towards me, tipping his gaze into mine before offering me a genuine smile. But since I got here, I can play the way I want. I can be who I want to be without having to hide it. You may be barbaric and less sophisticated than Macadians are, but at least you're free to choose what and who you want to become. If a little barbarism is the price you pay to have it, I'll gladly pay it. I, wow, I don't know what to say to that. I clearly didn't expect a cat to confess like that. In my slightly drunken state, there's only one thing I can think of in response to such a display. I take a cat in my arms, holding him close. I feel him freeze for a second before I hear him sigh softly and squeeze me back. In that case, I want you to know that I'm very glad that you have arrived here. Welcome to Frostfang, a kid of Makad. He tightens his grip on me slightly as he comes to rest his chin on my shoulder, letting me snuggle against his chest. His fingers briefly caress my muzzle, and they are much softer than I expected. And thank you for having me here, Eloia Frostfang. I couldn't have done it without you saving me, and without, and without everything else you did for me. 
It's a real pleasure, trust me. There, there was a brief moment of silence before I feel my tongue start to speak again without being able to stop it. Maybe I've had a little too much of a little too much Nadi myself. But you know, you don't have to stop there. I love it when people sing my praises. The bird bursts out laughing in response before I join him. We probably look like two idiots if anyone's watching. Two males, fairly drunk, hugging and laughing against each other. Not that I care right now. We stay like this for a little while, but the weight of a cat's head on my shoulder is starting to feel heavy. Not to mention his beak is harder than I thought it would be. A cat? No answer, because he's enjoying the moment as much as I am, but it's time to get back to the reality of things. A cat, c could you move, please? Still nothing. I'm getting a little worried here. As I listen carefully, I finally hear a faint noise that I have no trouble identifying. Snoring. A cat is snoring on my shoulder. The Nadi has done its job, and the falcon has, falcon has fallen asleep. Great. I ended up with a sleeping bird on my shoulder. Not exactly how I had planned the evening. But in the end, a cat was able to have fun and relax, and that's all that matters, right? I had to put quite a bit of effort into it, but I finally got the cat back to his room. The night is pretty clearly over for him, but not for me. After making sure the falcon is comfortably in his bed, I return to the courtyard, ready to enjoy the rest of the party. It's getting late, and the party doesn't seem to be winding down yet. The booze is flowing, the dancers are having fun, and I've seen at least four couples making out in dark corners. And one instance, I'm pretty sure there are more than two of them. A party just, the party just the way I like it. One of the events I'm most looking forward to, however, is about to happen. All my attention is focused on the stage and the group of four on it. A horse, a sheep, a fox, and most importantly, a weasel. Sven. I'm really curious to see what he's capable of now. After all, it's been two years since I've had the uh, pleasure of hearing him sing. I doubt he's improving much, though. Not that he's bad. Far from it. He's probably one of the most serious competitors. But I've never, never seen him spend hours practicing, and I doubt he's, I doubt he's changed. After a few moments of preparation, the band starts playing in. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? The White Stoat Ballad, seriously. He knows that's one of the best songs in my repertoire. That's what I was planning to sing tonight before I changed my mind to piss off the poodle. He's doing this to screw with me. He knows exactly what he's doing, but so be it. Go ahead, buddy. Go for it. I know your voice, and you've already tried to learn to sing the ballad. I know you're just not capable of singing it properly. You wouldn't know how to get high enough you wouldn't know how to get high enough during the choruses. So just make a fool of yourself. Oh you know? Water time. Alright. Either you're going to adapt adapt the song by taking it down a pitch so that it's possible for you to sing it, everyone will hear everyone here will hear it. We're among bards, after all, or you're going to break your voice. Either way, you will fuck up. As they approach the chorus, I can't help but smile more and more. Musicians are playing the music traditionally and in the usual tempo, without adapting it to Sven's voice. It's going to be a slaughter. I don't know what's gotten into you, but this is a really crappy idea. And there it is. The note goes up and Sven's voice follows it perfectly, including the vibrato at the end. No, 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 no. I know Sven's voice. He could never manage to sing like that. Even if he spent two years practicing every day, it's impossible. His voice is too low. There's clearly something wrong here. The song continues, but I can barely hear it. I still refuse to believe that Sven can hit that note. No, it's not a matter of believing or not. I know he isn't able to hit that note. The sound ends as my gaze is fixed on the weasel. I see the group bow and salute to the applause. Sven raises his muzzle, searching the crowd until he finds me. He then smiles, triumphant and superior, and that's when I understand how he does it. He's cheating, plain and simple. The bastard has a whisperer. I stare intensely at the tomato on my plate. His color reminds me of Sven's clothes, and it's not hard to imagine his stupid face popping out of the vegetable. Stabbing my fork as brutally as possible, and the poor cloud gives me a satisfaction that can hardly be can hardly be explained. Eloise, are are you are you okay? I slowly turn my head in a cat's direction to offer a big smile to the bird, but even I can feel that it's la that it lacks conviction. The end of the night was not the most pleasant, and clearly plays on my mood. After discovering that Sven is helped by a whisperer, my heart wasn't really in it anymore, and I went back to my room. I went to sleep. I was too angry. I know the weasel isn't the most rule-abiding person, but even for him, that's pushing it too far. He's passing off someone else's talent as his own. It's absolutely unacceptable. I'm okay, I guess. I just found out that one of the biggest assholes I know is using someone to discreetly alter his voice and correct it. And he's probably going to use this during the contest. How can I not be okay? Don't take this personally, but you're scaring me a bit. I let out a long sigh. I'm trying to terrify your partner, Louis. 
All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.